Today I fucked up by sending screenshots of a text conversation with my lover to my married best friend. I, 30-something M, was traveling abroad a few months ago. I met up with a woman and things went really well between us. We were chatting a lot on WhatsApp. One conversation was particularly juicy, so I took some screenshots and sent them to my best friend. I didn't know that was a fuck-up until yesterday. My best friend lives in another state, but I just happened to be visiting him and his wife right now. His wife went on his phone to look at some pictures he had recently taken of her, and she saw the screenshots I had sent months ago. She thought that they were of a conversation he was having with a woman, so she had to approach him about it while I'm visiting them. I guess she spent the whole day in emotional agony, waiting for an opportunity to approach him about it when I wasn't with the two of them, but that only made it worse. You see, my friend had totally forgotten that I sent him those messages. I guess a married guy doesn't care much about my dalliances. So, when she was like, what is this? He had no idea what she was talking about. He was saying something like, my phone must have been hacked, because he was totally baffled. Of course, she didn't believe that because it sounds like bullshit. I guess after a long and painful argument, he finally remembered, and had to show her the text conversation between him and me to prove he wasn't full of shit. She was embarrassed and made him promise not to tell me. He immediately told me, then made me promise not to tell her he told me, then he immediately told her that he told me. She then immediately told me that he told her that he told me. Honestly, I don't think she should be embarrassed. She wasn't snooping, and those texts would have been pretty damning. Anyway, I'm glad I didn't cause their divorce. Too long did not read. Sent my friend screenshots of an erotic conversation with my lover. His wife found them and thought he was having an affair. My friend forgot I sent them, so his excuses sounded fake. Turned into a big deal before he finally remembered. And hash x200b. Edit I wanted to keep the content of the screenshotted texts as vague as possible, but apparently I kept it too vague and some of you are upset. I think it's silly that you're upset regardless, but let me be clear. The messages were not, sexts. She referenced the fact that we had sex which is why I called it, erotic, also, the screenshots did not include her name or photo, and were in no way traceable back to her. Her message made it sound like she was catching feelings, which is why I sent it to my friend. I was also catching feelings. I wanted to talk to him about that. She was embarrassed and made him promise not to tell me. He immediately told me, then made me promise not to tell her he told me, then he immediately told her that he told me. She then immediately told me that he told her that he told me and hash x200b, is one of the funniest things I've ever read lmao. Love how he immediately told you and then told his wife he told you. She was embarrassed and made him promise not to tell me. He immediately told me, that's pure comedy gold. They don't know that we know they know we know. So she told him not to tell you, he tells you then he tells her he told you, then she told you he told her so, in turn you told us. Will you tell him or his wife you told us? By the way, this is great grammar exercise. She was embarrassed and made him promise not to tell me. He immediately told me, then made me promise not to tell her he told me, then he immediately told her that he told me. She then immediately told me that he told her that he told me. Like an episode from a drama series. She was embarrassed and made him promise not to tell me. He immediately told me, then made me promise not to tell her he told me, then he immediately told her that he told me. She then immediately told me that he told her that he told me. These two are clearly aware that communication is important in marriage. Also LMAO, I love this whole section. I guess a married guy doesn't care much about my dalliances. This is also a great little aside. But this is a wild story that definitely could have ended badly. Thankfully it didn't. Why would he save those screenshots though? Today I fucked up by leaving my bikini at a hotel on a work trip and almost getting my work friend divorced. Before the patent mic, I, 32F, was traveling extensively for work as I worked in international development. As part of a work perk, I get to stay in some nice hotels with pools once in a while, so I would always bring my glorious turquoise bikini to enjoy the amenities. On my last trip before the pandemic in 2019, I left my bikini at the hotel as I am often very forgetful. Apologies to all hotel staff having to clean up after idiots like me. Luckily a work friend was passing by the same city the following week. He picked up my bikini from the hotel and planned to bring it the office, thanks to local colleagues helping coordinate this pickup. Because we travel so often for work, he and I never ended up overlapping at the office until the pandemic hit. 
I assumed he lost my bikini in transit, rip bikini, as he insisted he returned it to me. Flash forward, it is 2022, I get a panic call from my friend. Apparently as he and his wife moved houses, she found my my turquoise bikini. She immediately assumed the worst and went to stay with her in-laws. My friend took a good week to recall how the bikini ended up in his possession, and a few awkward phone calls with several colleagues later, he realized it was my bikini. A few apologies and explanations later, his wife returned home. Phew. T.L. D.R. Today I fucked up when I almost caused my good friend's grief and potentially a divorce by leaving my bikini at a hotel after a work trip. Why didn't he just FedEx it to you, since you all travel so often? I figure that you would need to bikini on one of the trips before you overlapped with him again. Also, I am surprised that the wife believed this story. It seems like a conveniently convoluted lie that a husband would tell to cover up a work affair. Why did he have your bikini for three years? Good cover story, sounds solid. The wife should swallow this one. I'm lazy. I'd have forgotten to send it for a long time, too. The people in the comments trying to blame the husband are out of touch. You didn't fuck up. Your co-worker did and their spouse did. Your co-worker should have put it in a bag with your name on it, and left it at the office. Somewhere where you could find it. Their spouse immediately automatically assuming the worse. Possible denotes some underlying issues in their relationship. Anyway, not your fault. That she immediately moved out does not say much about their marriage. Grimace. I used to travel a lot for work. Once, a colleague dropped me off at the airport after we'd been on site visits, construction. So I'd changed out of my heels into sneakers and left my heels in his back seat. They were sensible black low heels at least not like stripper heels, well. I forgot about them at the airport because I was late for my flight and running to catch it. On Monday he sends me a text and said his wife found the shoes and was like, WTF at first but then he told her what happened, and she'd known he was picking me up at the airport for the site visits, and it was all good. Wife immediately assumed the worst. Tells you all you need to know. I'm far from the perfect partner but I'm 100% sure if my girlfriend found underwear that wasn't hers her initial reaction would not be, he's cheating and I'm leaving, fuck, she'd assume I was wearing it before that. Trust is important. Today I fucked up by trusting an er doctor. A few weeks ago I randomly felt a crushing pain in my chest that I assumed would just go away. 20 minutes after it started it turned into the most intense pain I have ever felt complete with sweating and vomiting. My friends drove me to the ER where I waited for three hours in complete agony before I was seen. The doctor seemed pretty unconcerned and told me I had acid reflux, without asking about my pain or doing blood work. I told him how painful it was for me and he told me he had it one time and it really hurt too. It could be noted at this point that I am 20-year-old Latina woman, and the doctor did ask where I was really from. I was pretty freaked out but whatever life goes on. My mom said that it didn't sound like acid reflux and I should really get it checked out, but I told her the doctor said I was fine and had acid reflux and it wasn't a big deal and I had nothing to worry about. Two weeks later the pain started again, not quite as bad but still horribly painful. I thought it was acid reflux and would be gone after I took my medicine. It did not. After eight hours of suffering waiting it to go away, and it only getting worse I gave in and went to the ER again. This time I was seen pretty quickly and the doctor was pretty unconcerned when I said I was here previously for the same issue and was told acid reflux. He said because I was just here and had blood work done I had nothing to worry about. I told him that I had not done any blood work and he suddenly seemed a little more concerned about me. After a blood and urine test they found that my enzymes were not at the right levels and ordered a sonogram. They determined that I had gallstones and needed my gallbladder out. It was a Saturday morning and they discharged me with a hydrocodone prescription and told me to call the hospital on Monday to schedule an appointment to see if I could get the surgery soon. About 12 hours later I am in crippling pain yet again. The hydrocodone did absolutely nothing for my pain and I am forced to return to the emergency room again. The nurses took blood and once again seemed unconcerned. After more blood work they found out that I was getting much worse and admitted me to the hospital. I ended up needing two surgeries and stayed in the hospital for four days. For comparison most people just need the surgery and return home the same day. My mom had to fly in, rent a car, and get a hotel to take care of me. I missed an entire week of my college classes and I am shuddering thinking of the bills from my three ER trips, two surgeries, and four days in the hospital. Too long did not read. 
trusted a first opinion from an ER doctor and ignored my mom's advice and ended up hospitalized for several days for a simple issue. I feel your pain, had to have mine taken out a couple years ago. So sorry you had to go through that. My dad's primary care physician told him he had acid reflux four separate times for over a year. Trying different medications and nothing worked. Saw a specialist finally. Stage 4 pancreatic cancer. He died within a month. Don't put your trust in just one doctor. Ever. Listen to your gut. When someone wants to dismiss you without testing, ask them to put it in your chart that they are refusing any testing. They usually think twice about sending you home on their hunch. Something similar happened when I had to get my appendix out. The doctor thought it was period cramps. He was about to send me home with some Tylenol and an eye roll. My mom basically demanded a CAT scan and what do you know? My appendix is hours from rupturing and I had cysts all over my ovaries, in which many had busted. I was rushed into surgery an hour later once they found a doctor who would work on a minor. I ended up needing two incisions and spent hours in surgery because they needed to take out my appendix and then cauterize the burst cysts because I was bleeding heavily. I had my gall bladder out and I also have acid reflux and there's no similarities between the symptoms of those. If it make you feel any better, my husband went on ulcer management drugs for two years. Finally his pain was so bad we went to the emergency room and the triage nurse A.L. significant others and us home telling us it was his ulcer. Next day we go the gastroenterologist's office and he calls for an ambulance to come to his office to pick up my husband because my husband has had a ruptured appendix that's been leaking into his abdomen for at least two years creating an enormous abscess that should have killed him going untreated for so long. He was in the hospital for 17 days. It was so bad. Lawyer up. They almost killed you. My husband complained of the same issue I gave him Mylanta and asked if he wanted to go to the hospital he said no and died in his sleep. That's sad. You really have to be your own patient advocate nowadays. I hope you are feeling better. Today I fucked up by poking fun at a co-worker for going on vacation constantly. I work for a relatively small construction company. 10 guys. Everyone is 40-50 years old except me, M22, and one older guy we'll say Joe, M65-ish. Joe is pretty much allowed to come and go as he pleases, take lots of vacation, leave early etc. Not really sure how he managed this arrangement but it's never bothered me or anyone else at the company. Anyway, Joe had just gotten back from a vacation, Arizona I believe, like 10 days ago. Me, Joe, my boss, and the secretary are in the office at the end of the day Friday talking about what's up for next week. Boss mentions to me that I'll be taking Joe's usual work truck to the site. All our important stuff is in there, on Monday. Cause Joe isn't gonna be here, to which I reply, another vacation already Joe. Must be nice. Jokingly cause honestly good for him. The room got quiet and Joe looks me in the eye and says, well if you want me to miss my mother's funeral then I'll be in Monday. I felt like shit, I had no idea. It was awkward, and I did apologize. TLDR made fun of a co-worker for going to his mom's funeral. When I was an apprentice, I walked into the toilet after another bloke had taken a dump and it was the most horrific smell I have ever encountered. I call out loudly in the workshop, FFS, what crawled up your ass and died, and everyone goes quiet. He turns back to me and says, I've got bowel cancer, and then walked off. I felt like the biggest pos that I was. Wow. You really stepped into that one with both feet. This is why I also don't say things like, hope you enjoyed your time off. Well, this and the fact I don't care about whether or not my co-workers enjoy their time off. Hope you sending a nice flower arrangement or some food lol. I did this to a colleague once. None of us were allowed to take Christmas off. I made a big stink when this guy was allowed to go home to Italy for Christmas. In front of a bunch of colleagues, I made a joke like, oh it must be nice for some, to have Christmas off. He turns round and replies, my dad is dying and I have to say goodbye. We ended up dating for over a year after this so I guess he wasn't too mad. I came out to a room full of co-workers everyone was dressed up for some reason and I said what is there a formal going on? It was for a funeral. You have learned a very valuable lesson. Keep your mouth out of other people's business. You don't know what is happening in anyone's life and it is not for you to judge anything. Also Joe has more seniority than you and has earned his PTO. Be like Joe and take time off so then you won't be that bitter guy watching other people's vacation. I tend to come and go as I please. A lot of people assume I'm a teacher's pet, boss's dog, straight and narrow sort. But really, I just know my shit. I get done what I need to and leave. 
I mind my own business, I complete my tasks and then I return to my own life. This is viewed as lazy, not giving enough and selfish. Bugger off. I don't owe you shit. I'm a great, hard worker and knowledgeable AF. I deserve to not have my time wasted. All that said, it took nearly dying to make that change for myself. Serious health issues should not be what takes away your slave status. Go live your lives people, you only get one. Don't just spend it so someone else gets out of doing their share. Eat the rich. I hear they taste like pork.